Sanders. I'm one of the co-organizers of this session. Um, and I, I run a project called Dig It 2017, which is all about promoting Scottish archaeology in 2017 because it's the year of history, heritage, and archaeology in Scotland in 2017. Um, and I do this on behalf of two Scottish charities, Archaeology Scotland and the Society of Antiquaries of Scotland, who both do fantastic things. If you've got a chance, give them a Google and find out what they're all about. That's the advertisement bit over. Um, I wanted to start this session by asking you all a question. Now, Dev found out that the majority of you are archaeologists, which is probably unsurprising. Um, is anyone here, though, a brewer? Either professional, amateur, unprofessional? How many times do you have to try it? <laughs> <laughs> I, I think you get to raise your hand, definitely. <laughs> Well, actually, that's identities are flexible. <laughs> that's actually, um, you know, a, a, a good number. Did you put your hand up? <laughs> you you struck your beat. <laughs> okay, that's, that, that, that's a good number. Um, next question then: How many of you have worked with some element of brewing heritage? All right. Wow, an even higher number. And I realise that the term brewing heritage. Um, is a very diverse one and probably covers an awful lot of stuff. Um, and I think that leads on kind of neatly to where I'm wanting to go at the end of this session, um, which is the, the manifesto for the archaeology of brewing, question mark, which is to actually really start to kind of consider what it is that we might be able to add um, to that kind of broad social context um, that, that Rob um, mentioned. This conference as a whole is themed around um, archaeology within its wider social context. Um, and in terms of that, beer and brewing is a very big business. Um, from figures from the Institutes of Brewing and Distilling, um, we spend £18 billion pounds annually um, on, on beer in the UK. Um, in, in sales, sorry, not just us spending that. Um, we've got 25 million regular beer drinkers um, in, in the UK, um, sampling over 3,000 um, individual brews, and over 700,000 people are employed directly or indirectly um, by the brewing um, industry. And we have over 650 breweries, the majority of which are, um, are, are microbrewers. And many of these trade on their heritage in one way or another either their brand as themselves or many of their individual um, uh, beer brands. And we've heard this morning um, in a whole series of really exciting talks um, a whole range of different ways in which brewing heritage is deployed. We've heard about it from a scientific perspective in terms of the um, ancient ales, but I also really like that story in terms of the innovative um, partnership between Patrick and um, Dogfish Head Brewery. We've heard about the social context, which was a kind of a really tough um, kind of order to fill, um, going through the entire social context of beer in 20 minutes, which I thought you did very, very ably, Rob. Um, but I thought it was really interesting talking about that kind of that impact, the tourism impact, and um, the town in Massachusetts. How do we as archaeologists get a piece of that? What can we actually usefully um, uh, contribute? Um, and it also made me think of some of the stuff that I've been involved in. We've done, um, we took part in a little um, program of events called Drinking About Museums up in Scotland, which used beer as a vehicle for discussing you know, museum collections and, um, and archives. And there's a very cool, if anyone's up in Edinburgh, um, uh, Edinburgh Museum at the moment has an uh, exhibition called Raise Your Glass, which draws heavily on the brewing archive of, of Edinburgh. And then you can go out and go on tours um, and drink beer, uh, etc. The other thing that struck me from that talk um, was when Rob said um, people's habits change and they seem to be able to change incredibly quickly. You know, how do we chart that as archaeologists? How do we um, explore that? And actually Nick's talk clarified an awful lot for me in terms of what is our role here as archaeologists. I thought that was a really... Um, where is Nick? He's moved. He's over there. Hello. Um, I, I really enjoyed the sense of actually we can be critical but we can also be um, very positive in our um, contribution. Um, and I think there was a, a, that's another thing I'm really hoping to explore in the, um, in the manifesto. Um, and also the, the process, I thought, was a key bit there as well. You know, beyond ingredients, also looking at process. And this afternoon, we'll be hearing another two really exciting, cool um, talks. 
looking at brewing heritage on the other side of the world, but which is also a very international story, um, and particularly the use of hops um, from places like New Zealand has actually transformed tastes um, back here in this country. Um, and also, I'm looking forward to the final talk, uh, because reading the abstract, it really made me think about the productive tension between the past um, and the present, and where we can go in terms of um, brewing heritage. I'm also really interested in this whole session from a Digit perspective, because we've found that beer is a very cool way of getting people interested and chatting about a whole range um, of, of other things. So as we move towards that panel discussion and to, um, through the, the final two talks, I'd like to get people thinking about what we as archaeologists can contribute. What can we add um, and how can we, we, we better make that um, contribution? Can we begin to see research trajectories? Um, or would we like to set something like a manifesto of approach? And also, do we have really good case studies? Um, I'm based in the National Museum of Scotland, and they entered a partnership agreement with Glenmorangie, the whiskey distiller. Um, and they, the, the distillery sponsors um, a research post, a whole series of exhibitions, um, uh, books, etc. Um, and it's a really close um, uh, relationship. And it's because uh, Glenmorangie's logo is uh, derived from a picture stone, the Hilton of Cadwell stone. Um, is, this a, is this something we want to pursue? Can we think of other good examples? And again, the dogfish head Patrick link up kind of pops into my head um, when I think about that. So we've got, still got lots of beer to drink. Um, I hope you've all got um, full glasses and empty bladders. Um, a big thank you to Charnwood, um, the, the brewers who, um, who brought the, um, the, the, the two beers. Thank you very much. They'll be watching this, I'm sure. A big thank you to the um, CIFA for inviting us along. Um, and for only telling me the room um, size was going to be about 40 people right at the end. So we catered for um, enough for, I think, 300 half pints or something. So, uh, <laughs> so in, in, in the gaps between the talks, um, I'll be inviting people to come up and please do, um, please do re recharge. Um, so as you sit and enjoy the next two talks, please do think of the stuff that we can discuss um, afterwards. Um, and now, it's my great pleasure, I'm hoping she's here. Ah, there we are, to introduce um, Andrea uh, Farmer now, who will be taking us to the other side of the world. Um, can we give her a round of applause to welcome her?